So back and, to uh, the focus of the day, Hydra and, versus Drago. Yeah, and welcome everyone. So as we can see, it's going to be Hydra on the bottom right and Drago on the top left one more, uh, playing as red. Uh, Drago is going for an E4 Extractor a bit fast again, uh, but this time he did put the Legion Hall down. They're both going to go for a Legion Hall first while, Dr while Hydra is doing the multiple once more just to get uh, the early pyre as fast as possible. It's not really the most popular strategy, uh, but yeah, it allows you to get the early pyre just a bit faster than usual. So I will say for context, because I actually played against uh, Hydra for a couple of games before knowing hey, that he was uh, like really good. He told me about this plan, the the double mode strat, right? You pull out both camps and then you get a ton of pyre. Um, that is something that he isn't sure about whether it should be in the game or not. So maybe he's doing like a gentleman's agreement thing, right? He's only going to go for one because uh, it's almost like a cheesy advantage. But it is interesting to see that he just went for the one-time play this time as opposed to going for both camps. Yeah, definitely. There's always a few interesting strategies that come out, come in and go, but, you know, it's not part of the code of the playtester. There's a few rules that all the players are agreed to, first being yep, that you don't take true. the second base in your map, in your base, and you don't block anything with your with your scouts because the scouts are really fast and very annoying to deal with. And if you have amazing micro, you're not going to be able to get... Oh, there's going to be a small fight this time. It's going to be a Jari oh. versus a Jari between the two. The oh, surround and coming in. The NPC actually creep blocking him there. Drago in trouble. Maybe he loses his third unit. I don't think so, but hey, early advantage over to Hydra. Yeah, I think Drago just wanted to get the power, and I do believe he got it. Uh, but we can see that the shield of Drago went up because as soon as he joined the Hallow Grounds, that gives him a bit of a defense boost there. So from there, Hydra knew he wouldn't be able to push his advantage further, but he did get a few extra kills. And in this early game, a few extra kills can make a big difference. Uh, both of them feel, oh no, only Hydra feels comfortable expanding right now, whereas uh, Drago once more going for a bit of more attack heavy route already has his Soul Foundry down. On Hydra's side, no, the Soul Foundry is also going down, so not really a big advantage for Drago, a bit faster on his side. Uh, two Sipari going down, he's going to try and do a bit of damage on the left side. Oh, 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 ZK, there's a little teapot, and it makes it out alive. However, Hydra has his info now, knowing that uh, there yeah, is Drago's some amount of units here. Yeah, Drago's going to wait for his 200 units before heading in, uh, but he knows it's not really worth going in right now. Uh, the teapot is he's going to see everything. Oh, but uh, Hydra wasn't know. looking. I, I'm looking. not sure. Yeah, I don't know if he caught this. He could maybe snipe this turret here, and that would be a cute little pick. However, here we go. Hydra with the instant reaction. Is he able to defend his base? Yep. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, the other thing we can notice again is once more they had the blue shield. Uh, the blue shield meaning that they came out of the hallowed ground, which allows them to have uh, a bit of a speed boost as well. So when you're in the early game like this, having this small speed boost might be enough to surround your opponent and get the, the extra kill. Sorry, oh, I'm the two Absolvers are out right now. My Hula Hoop guys are in. The Hula Hoop guys are in. ZK is popping off. So these guys do so much damage. As soon as they get in position, they're getting right in position right now. They're looking and for And look it. at the damage output. Look this how turret's fast not up. Shoots. Oh my goodness. That is an instant cancel from Hydra, knowing that he had no chance that that was going to survive. Oh, I think I was wondering if Hydra wanted to cancel this base because without Absolvers of his own, it's going to be really hard to take care of this. Dervish are also there. Dervish can be able to do a bit of AoE damage. Oh, Hydra has a lot of Dervish of his own, but Dervish don't do well against Absolvers. Absolvers are the kings of the hill right now. Yeah, just look at that DPS. I mean, if you can't actually survive to get close range, then who cares? And Dervishes are not known for being ridiculously tanky units. They're strong, they Hydra. have an AoE attack, but... Hydra going for the counter attacks. can try and get all the moats on the other side, and he will be able to get them with four Dervish. There's no way the Drago's going to do this, but to be fair, even if I'm Drago, I take this trade any day of the week. Oh, oh and not even. He's just going, he's for, going the base. for the main. There is a base currently being produced, but there is no secondary for Drago. If this base falls, that is actually just going to be GG. It's a lot of damage, but there is a tower as well to north, the Bastion that gives mm -hmm. extra resources as well is very useful. And the Dervish are just moving around, trying to micro, but... I don't think he's going to be able to get it. There, there's enough uh, Dervish coming out and distracting. The tower is here. The tower doing a bit of damage. I don't and know, Dervish man. went down? Only three Dervish left as well, so this... I guess it was able to take one out. All of this time that's being spent, though, yeah, there's a little bit of a stalemate, and it's possible the Hydra loses these Dervish, but that has zero production, zero alloy mining that is happening right now <laughs> yeah. with the mode trying to make it, and it's gone. Yeah, actually, uh, one of the errors with this game right now is that moats will auto-produce. So there's no way to stop the production of moats if there's not six of them mining. So they're just going to keep constantly producing and losing alloy for nothing. That's uh, really unfortunate. But we can see on the other side uh, that that uh, Drago is taking a nice position. going to be able to take oh, out the look at the micro. Keeps his dervish alive. And can they actually surround the... Oh, man. This is such great individual micro play. 
and another moat. They're actually dealing a little bit of damage. Drago is thinking he's going for some structures here, and it looks like actually the Absolver will be able to take down the uh, Legion Hall. Yeah, the first Legion, Legion Hall. Hall yeah. That's that's a lot of supply lost on the other side. Hydra is not mining either, as you can see that uh, the Dervish is here on Drago's side. So the Dervish on both sides, neither yeah. side is mining right now. Uh, is oh a... no, on the top, on the top oh, corner. Oh, he went oh, back the for the moats. Right the Dervish are going for the moats, and Drago doesn't know. He doesn't respond in time, and now they are completely gone. It looks like Drago is going to try and answer in kind, but I don't know, man. We see a couple the of Charles are up, in, but here comes the yeah, TP. Yeah, yep. Yeah, the Ostrich went down there. The Ostrich does a lot of damage. Can one shot the. One shot the, <clears throat> the Absolver, but fortunately for him, when you do uh, Heaven's Ages, which, uh, not Heaven's Ages, sorry, when you do Reco Re Deliver from Evil, which allows you to teleport mm -hmm. back home, you get 50 extra shields, which allowed him to barely survive the attack there. Oh, can the service catch the moat? I don't really think so. I think it will go down, but that might have been oh, enough yeah. damage done to the Econ there. Actually, yeah, Hydra, Hydra might be in the lead right now. Both of them weren't mining, but in this game, to help uh, the... The less uh, the gamers that aren't quite as adept at, at RTS games as these two oh players, my Lord. the most go back to mining after a little bit. That was oh. such a destructive team fight. Hydra's army just walloping them. There was one single absolver left alive, and Hydra's just ignoring it. I mean, he's might as well. We see a couple of units being created by Drago. Some moats on the run, but they are not long for this world, I believe. So far, the oh. army. Oh, this is. Oh, he's trapped. The body block coming in. The turf is taken down. This absolver is surely to die, but still the advantage over right. to Hydra. The Allstrike's going down, but both Allstrike's miss from the Shar, so he's going to be able to barely survive here. Wow. Good from Drago, barely able to survive, and they're both on two bases right now. I still think that uh, Hydra's in the lead, having his two Sharos out, and Sharos not dead is really good. There's a Castigator, though, on uh, Drago's side. The Castigator is really good at zoning it out. A second Castigator out, so maybe he's going to be able to keep the Sharos ineffective. The dirt, there was a Separi as well on the other side, so there's not many moats mining on the Hydra side, so they're both very, very uh, close in economy. I'm really not sure which game, which side this game is going for. The Shar is a definitely good advantage, but who knows who is really winning right now. And it's such an interesting dynamic between these two players in this game, because the first game seemed to be a gentleman's agreement of building a early large army and slowly accruing stronger units over time right they both had giant blobs crossing the map for what seemed like 25 minutes until the game ended but they are just fighting back and forth a slobber knocker here we finally see a throne coming out from hydra a couple of higher tier tech units yeah. but man really, what a difference yeah that's really how this game goes you know sometimes it's the game, strategy games like this can always go in so many dire, uh, directions. Hydra in the first game really wanted to play defensive, but this game, Drago forced his hand. He was able to take out his natural, and with a base less, uh, Hydra decided to go for the base trade. And it worked. Ooh. They were both on equal footing at this point, and they're running, they're jumping on him. The throne is taking a little bit of fire, but. Yeah, the cast, having, that's uh, a really smart composition from Drago's side right now, having two Cascaders doing a lot of damage. He'll make it out, though. He's a slow, big unit, and obviously the Castigator is doing so well as anti-air. But he was close enough to his base that he was able to make it back, and I see a little teapot. Ooh. Makes it out alive. The are doing a lot of damage to the Dervish there. Yep. And the Spartan can try and chase a bit. They have their little speed boost. They're able to chase a bit further than usual, uh, but they're going to have to end up turning it back very soon, unless uh, they think you could... Oh, the Shara doing some harass on the other side. And there's a Tempest, so he's going to stop the retreat as well. That's great. Oh. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to completely admit it i wasn't understanding what the tempest looked like just due to the visual now i get what that was that was really well played by yeah, hydra but, to sort of force them out but actually drago really played it well as played well around it. around it so maybe, yeah yeah like, exactly just cool stuff but I, i'm just i know that takes us out of the cast a little bit i was like oh that's what that is oh yeah that's funny a nice little a nice little tempest all the thrones are here the thrones are gonna be able to take out one cast again unfortunately uh, the second one's here, so we're going to be able to to uh, control the space a bit more, stop Drago, for, stop Hydra from doing too much damage. But Hydra seems to be bringing his Sharu up to the main right now, so he's going to try to kill the moats in the main. I'm going to have to be careful, though. No. So, okay. I'm curious. Uh, I've got a question for you with how the game is playing out. Do you think Pyre is more valuable than expansions? As we see, oh, boom, big hit from the Sharu there. Uh, definitely not. In this game, it's always about the economy. The, these type of games that are very similar to StarCraft, it's always about the economy, who can get the bigger army out. The mm -hmm. power is good to turn a fight, but it's not going to turn the game generally unless oh, you, you win you win too too many fights. It's, it's mm -hmm. really good to turn a fight, but to win the game, you need a stronger economy. You need to 
to out macro your opponent. It still comes down to this in the in this game as in StarCraft. Gotcha. One thing I think is interesting in terms of the pre-alpha meta, as it were, is that we see a lot of roaming armies. Uh, there aren't as many defensive sort of stay at home and try to expand slowly units, and it's really uh, about play style, right? Like if your army roams and goes for a lot of pyre, like we've seen this game compared to last. Oh, maybe a cutoff here. Actually, yeah, it's actually. Oh man. It's actually something that's very much has to do with uh, the immortal you choose. It's not the, okay. Oh, when Heaven's Age is going down for yeah. Heaven's Age. Oh, look at the Tempest oh, killing the goodness. right down. That, yeah, that's, that's it. That was so sudden, but a well-timed ability there. And that is all she wrote. The GG's coming out.